Hi, I'm Tim Koch with the Ashokan Watershed Stream Management Program. Today we're going to talk about stream channel stability. In our stream management and restoration activities, we always shoot to have stable stream channels because stable streams produce clean, clear water, cause less erosion, are more resilient to floods, and provide better habitat for aquatic and riparian species. So in this video, we're going to look at one definition of stream channel stability. We'll break it apart and look at it piece by piece so that we can really understand what a stable stream is and why that's important to all of us. A widely used definition of river or stream stability comes from Dave Rosgen, who says, River stability is defined as the ability of a river over time in the present climate to transport the flows and sediment produced by its watershed in such a manner that the stream maintains its dimension, pattern, and profile without either aggrading or degrading. So the first part of the definition is saying that time and climate both play a role in stream channel stability. Time is a factor because a stream needs to maintain its form through time in order to be stable. Stability is not a snapshot, it's an ongoing process. And climate is a factor as well, because if and when the climate changes, that's going to change the whole hydrologic cycle of precipitation and runoff and evapotranspiration, and the stream channel will adjust itself accordingly. Now, why and how the channel will change is what we're gonna talk about next, and we'll also talk a little bit later about how modern climate change is going to have an impact on the stability of our rivers and streams. So in the present climate, a stable stream must maintain its form through time. It also must transport the sediment and flows produced by its watershed. In stream management and restoration, understanding the sediment moving through the system is just as important, if not more important, than understanding the hydrology or the water. After all, streams are basically made up of the sediment that was brought here by the stream itself. So, in the present climate, a stable stream transports the flows and the sediment produced by its watershed over time, and it does so while maintaining its dimension, pattern, and profile. Now this is where we really start to talk about what a stable stream is, how it can change, how it can flood and erode and modify the landscape over time, all while being stable. This is also where we get into the fun part of the field of fluvial geomorphology studying the river, measuring the river, and trying to understand the river. Dimension, pattern, and profile are three different ways of looking at a stream channel. A stream's dimension is the cross-section of its channel, what it looks like if you slice through the river like a loaf of bread. To determine a stream's dimension, we take a cross-section and use the stream's width and depth to calculate three important dimensions, the cross-sectional area, the width to depth ratio of the channel, and the entrenchment ratio. A stream's pattern is what it looks like from above. Is the stream straight or does it meander? Does it meander a little or a lot? The degree to which a stream meanders is called its sinuosity, and it's calculated by measuring the length of the channel and dividing it by the straight line length of the valley. We also use stream patterns to measure things like the radius of curvature of meanders, meander wavelengths, and the belt width. The profile is the side view of the stream. A longitudinal profile, or long pro as we call it, is when we take a detailed measurement of the changes in elevation as the stream flows downhill. In addition to a variety of different slope measurements, long pros can also be used to measure other important stream features like average pool depth, pool to pool spacing, and riffle length. So a stable stream must maintain its dimension, pattern, and profile over time, but we didn't say that a stable stream has to stay in one place. Gradual erosion is a natural process, including stream bank erosion. And that erosion of the stream bank is what allows a stable stream to migrate back and forth across a valley floor while maintaining its dimension, pattern, and profile. 
So a stable stream maintains its dimension, pattern, and profile over time while transporting sediment and flows from its watershed. It's stable whether it dramatically migrates across a wide, flat valley floor, and it's stable if it's a small stream like this one that will stay relatively straight in a steep and confined valley. What a stable stream can't do, though, is it can't be either a grading or degrading. Aggradation and degradation are both the result of an imbalance between the amount of water and the amount of sediment being delivered to the channel from the watershed. You can think of this relationship like a scale with water on one side and sediment on the other. On the water side, the amount of water or discharge and the slope of the channel both have an influence. On the sediment side, the total amount of sediment and the average size of the sediment particle are both important. Aggradation is when the scale is tipped in favor of the sediment. There is more sediment than the water can move, and more material is being delivered to an area than is being moved out, and you get a net increase of sediment. Aggradation is often the result of excess erosion occurring somewhere upstream, and that material is being transported into an area where the water flow can't handle it. Degradation is just the opposite. Excess erosion and transport of sediment. There is more water being delivered from the watershed than is needed to move the sediment load. So more material is being carried away from an area than is being replaced, and you get a net loss of sediment. This commonly occurs after a natural area becomes developed. The increase in impervious surfaces like roads, driveways, and buildings means more water gets to the stream channel faster, and it disrupts the balance, causing excess erosion. As I said earlier in this video, it's very important to remember that streams move both water and sediment. A stream can't maintain its dimension, pattern, and profile if the water and sediment from the watershed are out of balance. That is, if the stream is either a grading or degrading. Stability has real-world implications that affect us all. Unstable streams erode and shift and change the landscape as well, but they usually do it much more quickly, more dramatically, and more unpredictably. Stream stability also seems to manifest itself in the most inconvenient places, near our homes and our bridges. It doesn't only affect the people that live and work very close to them. Unstable streams can have serious impacts on many parts of our public infrastructure, including our roads, bridges, culverts, and other public utilities. So stream stability really does affect us all. As I said earlier, we're likely to see a shift in our streams due to modern climate change. Here in upstate New York, we're predicted to see a warmer and a wetter climate, and a wetter climate that has more intense precipitation events that occur more frequently. The shift that we're likely to see in our stream channels because of that is an enlargement. The channel is first going to get deeper and then get wider. And so if we plan for these climate-induced changes now, we can prevent a lot of human stream conflict in the future. That's why at the Ashokan Watershed Stream Management Program, we advocate for working with the natural tendencies of streams to improve their channel stability, which will help to mitigate flood risk, maintain water quality, and habitat quality, all while planning for a change in climate. We can also restore degraded streams to a more stable form and allow them to find their own balance while causing the least harm to us, to our property, to the stream itself, or to the ecosystem. So I hope this helps to explain what a stable stream is and why maintaining channel stability is important to us all.